<laughs> Just a brutal finish for the Oklahoma City Thunder's season. Here's Billy Donovan. Forced to play small. Um, you know, I, th I thought um, I thought late in the game. I'm anxious to see some of them. Um, you know, I thought Russell's charge was a, was was a big play in the game. Uh, I thought Ferguson's over the back foul. That was another big play. We had another couple fouls. We put him to the free throw line. Um, you know, I don't know if those calls were, were accurate or not. Well, I'm, see, I'm not. I don't any opinion on it. They just they were tough calls that could have changed momentum a little bit. I know Paul had a couple free throws we could have knocked down, so we kind of struggled to put just keep continue to put some points on the board. We gave them some free throws. Harkless shot it well from the free throw line, and then obviously Lillard had a, a great game from from start to finish. So. You know, our guys battled and competed and, um, you know, just weren't able to close the game out. Billy, with the way you all defended with Jeremy kind of in the pick and rolls, Adams on, on Harkless, they didn't get rolls to the rim and, and catch and shoots, kind of betting that Lillard wasn't going to be able to shoot the way that he did. Was that sort of the, the strategy that, that you tried to go to? And do you feel like it had a chance to work? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I understood what I mean in terms of what part. I guess, did you feel like Lillard might run out of gas having to go one, oh, one the um, entire game? You know, obviously he played the whole first half. Um, I probably would have done the same thing with Paul, you know, had he not picked up fouls. Um, you know, we, I thought we gave a really, really good effort, but he was really, um, he made some tough shots. I mean, you got to give him credit. I mean, I think at the night he had, uh, and the shots that he made, um, epitomized the last shot of the game. Those are kind of some of the shots he made throughout the first half. Um, I thought some of them were really well defended. I thought we worked hard. We tried to trap him some. Uh, sometimes he was able to kind of get through it and get downhill. I thought we came over and pulled across and help. Um, you know, I know McCollum never really got into the flow of the game uh, with the foul trouble, but I thought, you know, that last five minutes he kind of stepped up and made some big shots for them as well. You know, in critical times like elbow, mid range, pull up jumpers off the dribble, well guarded. Um, and, um, you know, that obviously uh, kind of got them on their run. Billy, Brett Dawson with The Athletic. Obviously, you're, you're a pretty even keeled guy, but, but just emotionally, what kind of note is that to, to go out a season with to end on a buzzer beater on that kind of play? Yeah, I mean, it's tough because, you know, you're sitting over there as a coach and your guys are really fighting and battling and they're doing everything they can do. And like I said, we had some things down that just didn't really go well, and I don't fault our guys at all. I, I just say there was plays like we made a great play to Dennis in the corner and we just couldn't knock down a shot. Terrence, I thought, tipped the ball to Paul for a layup and... Uh, you know, we got called for a foul. Russell's charge. Jeremy had one on the baseline. We just didn't finish it. We just kind of came up with some empty possessions, and we were doing some really, really good things. We just didn't finish some plays to kind of really just keep extending the lead. And then some of the fouling, and then obviously their shot making, you know, got them back in the game. Yeah, Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma. And Billy, you shot 54% from the field, 44% from three. So you offensively played well. Do you feel like your defense played well and Lillard just had a game for the ages? Yeah, I mean, I thought we moved the basketball. I thought we really did some better things than, you know, I thought, I thought closing out um, this, the, the second half of um, uh, game four, you know, we, were, we, we needed to be better offensively. I thought we had our moments. We were okay. I really thought tonight from start to finish we, we, played, uh, we played well offensively. You know, both teams are small. There's a lot of switching, so there was obviously a lot of having to play isolation, elbow, drive, basketball. Um, you know, but I thought, I thought our guys played and did a good job offensively. Defensively, um, you know, I'll watch the film, but I really felt like from the sideline, Lillard made some really, really hard shots. You know, he, he even early in the game, he had one where he was driving and he jumped off one leg and he was behind the backboard and kind of shot a runner on the baseline and he made that one. He made a tough three out of the corner. There was one Dennis was really on him tightly and he made it. Um, maybe could even could, 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 could have even been a foul. Um, um, he's more than welcome to sit with me. Um, but I, I mean, I thought we really battled. I thought the dif different things that um, that Jeremy was able to do flexibility-wise was was good for us. Billy, uh, Eric Anderson, USA Today, over here. Uh, your team was fourth in defensive rating all year. Uh, what do you think overall about your defense on on Dame and CJ throughout the whole series? Obviously, you mentioned shot making, but do you think that was mostly what it was? Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, McCollum's driving, and everybody talks about the analytics. Mid-range jump shots are not good jump shots, and you're, you're making them take contested jump shots. It's hard. I mean, the shot that Little made at the end of the game was near half court. You know, so I don't know. You, you can't. You're not going to guard. You know, a whole entire half court. You want guys to make certain shots, and I thought our guys battled. And when those guys have space like that and a lot of room to maneuver, even when we were trying to trap uh, him, you know, he was taking on Stephen Adams. Um, Stephen did a really, really good job, I thought, in the second half of really trying to contain him and control him and corral him as best he could. But he, got, you know, splits it and he drives it and he does that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I thought our guys worked really, really hard, and I thought those guys made some really, really hard shots. I mean, just call it like it is, and give them credit for doing it. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Can you walk through that kind of that last possession? You mentioned it's almost half court. What are you thinking when that shot goes up from Lillard? Well, I knew it was going up because I was kind of watching the clock because I was watching the way the floor was balanced on, on, along the baseline because I thought if he ended up driving past Paul, we're going to have to come over and help as the clock went down. Once it got to about, I looked up, there was like, Obviously, the tens of seconds were growing quick. It was like two and a half seconds. I'm like, okay, he's shooting this because he doesn't have time to go anywhere else. And he kind of just kind of got into rhythm and shot it. And, uh, you know, Paul contested it. Paul was out there. And I thought, you know, I thought Paul, you know, the, the game he had tonight was just, I, I thought, terrific. You know, he was really efficient on offense. He, you know, guarded Lillard, called McCollum. He did so many different things for us. You know, um, same thing with Russell and Jeremy, Steven, all of our guys, Dennis, I, I, they all battled. So, uh, you know, obviously it was, it was a tough, tough way to end, but it was, a, it was a, obviously an unbelievable shot. Any more questions for Coach? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Billy Donovan there. We'll hear from Terry Stotts in just a moment. Candace Parker, like everybody else in the basketball universe, watching. Yeah. We'd all like to feel that. I felt it. A couple it. times in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it. Oh. I was right man. there with him when he shot it. I'm telling you, the studio <laughs> was going nuts. The whole building was going nuts. So this will get nitpicked to death from OKC's point of view. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, you know, there were empty possessions, as Billy Donovan described them down the stretch. There were turnovers, five turnovers in the fourth, fourth quarter. It wasn't just those last two or three minutes. Um, there was the offensive foul on Russell Westbrook. There was some questionable shot selection, et cetera. But just on that final defensive possession for OKC, what could or should they have done differently to affect the outcome of this game and, and at this point would still be playing in overtime? Well, not to pick on OKC and that coaching staff, but at halftime there had to be some type of discussion, right? If this game gets tight in the waning moments, are we going to run at Damian Lillard? He had a game going. First half he had over 34 points right there with 48. You know he, he was ice on for the win. We have to run a secondary defender yep. at him. All right, let's hear from Terry Stotts. T Terry Kerry Eggers, Portland Tribune. I know you don't like to rank games, but I'm going to ask you anyway, where does this rank among the great games you've seen with Coach? Uh, Damien's performance was probably the best performance I've seen in person. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I can't think of, uh, you know, I've seen 50-point games, obviously, but the way he carried the team in the first half, uh, with, Dan with CJ in foul trouble, uh, the magnitude of the last shot, obviously, to win a series. The fact he's now won two series on a single shot, um, or on two shots, I should say. But um, no, it was it was quite a performance, and you know we had a lot of good good effort up and down. Like you don't win a game, but with one guy, but he certainly was uh, special tonight. Third row right, coach. Uh -huh. Coach Eric Anderson, USA Today. Uh, Ennis looked like he was laboring out there. What is he going through and dealing with right now? And what can you say about his toughness tonight uh, being out there for you guys? I tell you what, he, he gave it all. I mean, his shoulders bothering him. Uh, he played through pain. Uh, even with the pain, he was posting up. We played through him a little bit in the fourth quarter. Uh, he got some big rebounds. But the toughness he showed, um, I, I think it's a little bit indicative of our team, the fact that everybody's does whatever they can to get a win. On your left, Coach, over here on the wall. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. When did Nurk show up, and what kind of effect did you see that have? I was told that uh, we were down eight when he showed up. Um, so he's got a plus eight. <laughs> Actually, more than that. Actually, we won by three, right? So plus 11. So his plus minus was really good. Um, you know, that honestly, it, you guys know it. I mean, you felt it in the building when they showed him on the big screen, the fact that he showed up. No one knew he was going to show up. Um, 
and uh, I honestly, I think we fed off of that. There's a little, uh, I think there's a little good karma when uh, when he did show up. Right, Coach. Royce Young, ESPN. Terry, you know, you talk about Dame's shot there, and, and you can kind of see the clock running out, and it's becoming apparent that he's going to launch it from almost half court. What's going through your mind there? Are you thinking, well, we might could have got a better shot, or are you like, I'm just trusting No, him. honestly, um, I mean, I didn't mind it because it was a tie score. Uh, Paul George and, and Westbrook were both had five fouls. We had momentum. So if it did go to overtime, you know, I liked our chances. Uh, with all that going on, but uh, you know, when it got down to four or five, I kind of knew what was going to happen. Uh, Terry Dwight James, uh, whatever I work for. Yeah, you've worked for so many places. Point, <laughs> at this point in time, it's a little crazy. Um, can you talk about Damian? His magnitude as a player, he's kind of getting a lot more national publicity right now because of all this, but. How many players have you seen that you'd be okay with pulling up for a 37-footer to win a game? You know, he's special. He's, you know, he's in a class of his own. You know, it's funny. You know, if Steph Curry does that, you know, people don't think much of it. But uh, Dame, for, for, for people who have not seen us play much, Dame's had a special year. And he is in the category of all those guys that don't, that he probably doesn't get as, not, as much acknowledgement for. But you know, he has been doing it. People in Portland know he's, knows he's been doing it. He's carried our team this year. So, um, you know, it's just it's who he is, and and I'm thankful for it. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Again? Uh, what, what went into the decision to play Lillard the entire first half, and how did you kind of see him respond to that? Uh, it really was an easy decision with CJ with three fouls. I knew I wasn't going to go back with CJ. Uh, he was having a night. And, um, you know, for the first half, he can play 24 minutes. I didn't know how the second half was going to go, but I just, uh, it made no sense to take him out in the first half. Any questions for Coach? Up front. Come on, Barry. Come on, you're the, you're the, oh, you're on deadline. Man, you're all over the airwaves. You're getting, you're interviewing everybody. Everybody's interviewing you. Give me three minutes and we'll be in business. I don't know if I'll be ready for that then. Up front, please. Jude Danubi, 1029 the game. Coach, a very intense finish to a very intense series. What does relaxing look like for you after this? Is there any sort of relaxing that you can do before the second round, watching a little Denver San Antonio? Um, I don't know. Tomorrow I'll be uh, sleep in, maybe get a walk, um, have a glass of wine, probably have a little champagne now. So, uh, you know, it's we re there's really not a lot to do uh, going in since we don't know who we're going to play yet. Um, we'll all watch the game on Thursday and um, see what see where we go from there. But uh, the next two days will pre be pretty low key. Up front here in the center. Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma. Oh, it's so tempting. Yeah, yeah. It's so tempting. <laughs> Go ahead and do it. No, no. You'll, make, you'll make national I news. I'm going to take the high road. You'll make national news. I'm taking news. the high road. Um, Barry Trammell, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Damien sort of carried you that first half. Sort uh, of. And he, well, yes. And he made so many shots. Do you think he got the other guys didn't get in rhythm, particularly CJ? It took him a while in the second half. I mean, second half. Especially down the stretch, CJ came alive. But was it a case that Damian was doing so much, the other guys didn't no, get in the flow? Or I mean, that, that's a good question. That's a good question, Barry Trammell. Um, uh, I uh, it could be true, but uh, I think it was tough for CJ to sit the whole first half and and get his rhythm in the game. I mean, when you're in the game the whole first half and it's at a high level, uh, it's hard to kind of kick in. But uh, I don't know. I thought um, I thought the third quarter was was well played. I, I wouldn't necessarily go go with that. Um, I mean, Dame was, I thought, in the third quarter, once we were back at full strength, uh, I thought we played pretty much the same way. And, you know, we we had a, we got a nice lead. We got a nine-point lead um, before things kind of fell apart. Okay, thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. Terry Stotts after a dramatic win and series ender tonight in Portland. And with that, we asked Joe Borger, the Senior Vice President of Replay and Referee Operations, to top that tonight. See if you can pull that off for us, Joe. We've got some plays for you to uh, evaluate for us. 
During the third quarter of tonight's Net Sixers game, Jimmy Butler was called for an offensive foul while J.J. Redick was going up for a three-pointer. Talk us through the play, if you would. Sure, Matt. Uh, what you're going to see is, you know, Butler does a pass to uh, J.J. Redick in the corner. The problem is, is after he passes the ball, he keeps moving forward and runs into Dudley, who is guarding J.J. So, in reality, Butler ends up setting an illegal screen. To be legal, he, he would have to get directly in front of Dudley and give him an opportunity to stop or change direction, and he just doesn't do that. So, this is the handoff screen, but he, he has to come to a stop and avoid Dudley, who is guarding J.J. And his intent has nothing to do with it, whether he, uh, we don't know what it was in his mind, but he kept moving and he prevented the defender from getting there, so easy call. All right, next, during the first quarter of the Blazers-Thunder game, before the drama late, Russell Westbrook went up for a tip layup attempt as the ball appeared to be still touching the rim. Why was this a good basket? Well, Matt, we have two differences when we're talking goaltending and basket interference. We have a ball that is bouncing on the rim, and that is a cylinder play where if any part of the ball is inside the cylinder, you're not allowed to touch it. On this play, the ball stops bouncing, and it is rolling on the rim, using the rim as its lower base. Therefore, once the ball rolls to the outside edge, right there, anybody is allowed to touch the ball, and so therefore, it's a, it's a legal tip in. Hmm. All right, finally, in the fourth quarter of the Thunder Blazers game, Damian Lillard goes up for a three-pointer, but he is fouled by Jeremy Grant. Portland wanted free throws for Lillard, why was this a non-shooting foul? Well, a few years ago, if you remember, we did a little recalibration on uh, shots on the outside. And a jump shooter must be in his upward motion to shoot when he's fouled to be given continuation. What you're going to be seeing here is Lillard is dribbling the ball with his left hand. And as he brings his right hand over so that he can secure the ball with two hands, so he can shoot, okay, the foul is before that. Therefore, he is not considered in his shooting motion, and that is a side out or penalty free throws. You do not get continuation until you have secured the ball and you're upward in your shooting motion, not upward bringing the ball so you mm. can start to shoot. Right. That's Joe Borges, Senior Vice President, Replay and Referee Operations, who is Lillard clutch when it comes to these post-game segments. Thank you, Matt. More coming up here as we continue our post-game coverage. Dame Lillard, a shot you will see for a very, very